Hello guys and welcome to another Profile Tree video. So in today's video we're going to be talking about the web development challenges you can face and tips for overcoming those obstacles. So without further ado we're going to go ahead and get started. So just to get started, web development is the process of creating websites and web applications for the internet. It involves a range of tasks that's including web design, front-end and back-end development, database management, and server configuration. We'll talk more detail about the web design, front-end and back de back-end development. That's more to do with the UI UX design as well as some of the software programs that you can use for front-end and back-end development. But anyways, web developers use programming languages, frameworks, and various tools to build and maintain websites that are functional, visually appealing, and user-friendly. So of course, while web development is a rewarding field, it does come with its fair share of challenges and obstacles. Here are some of the most common obstacles that web developers may encounter. So let's elaborate on keeping up with the technology. Now with the ongoing rapid pace of technological advancements, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So to overcome this challenge, make sure that you stay updated by reading blogs, taking online courses and attending each tech conference. Now, of course, there are plenty of online resources, one being TechCrunch, Wired or TechRadar. These platforms regularly publish articles on the latest trends, innovations and updates in the tech industry. Now, of course, if you are looking to do some online courses, which I highly recommend as well, I would say you'd be best to use the likes of Udemy, EDX, and Course RA. These platforms offer a wide range of courses related to web development, not just web development as, as well. You can also learn a couple of different programming languages also. So if you want to gain a general information on wanting to overcome some of the obstacles that you face currently, you can actually apply for some of the free courses on Udemy or the following platforms mentioned. And what's great about the online courses is that you can even screen share and briefly navigate through these platforms just to demonstrate how to search for your relevant courses. Now, it's great as well to join tech conferences there are plenty of different tech conferences online and in person and it's great to provide an insight on the latest developments now there are popular people that do these tech conferences like google apple and several different tech companies that may go through the latest tech Now, other ways to keep up with the technology as well is to attend tech conferences. Now, there's a vast amount of latest developments that are covered by big companies like Google, you even have Apple, WWDC as well. And they do a load of different conferences based on the current technology that's been used for web development, especially to make things easier for web developers as well to create some tools. So we all know there are different types of plugins as well that we can use and even Chrome extensions that can help us along the way during web development. So that's why it's key to attend these conferences just to get a clear understanding of what the latest technologies are at this current date. Next up is, is social media. So the likes of Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, there's a community there that can help you. 
And you've also got different influencers, industry leaders, and companies on social media that can provide real-time updates and insights of the latest technologies. Now, of course, other areas for keeping up with technologies, you've got podcasts and webinars. That's also great. It's fairly related to social media itself. However, with podcasts and webinars, you could visually see some of the tech that's available, especially if they're doing a review on it or a review on a particular software, especially ones that are new to help with web development. However, if you don't really want to view a podcast via video or a webinar on video as well, you have the choice to listen to these resources during your commute or while multitasking. So if you're working on a website, you just want to listen in, uh, you're maybe stuck on a particular area and you're looking for another software piece to help you out with your web development, especially if you're stuck in that obstacle, then listen in to a podcast or a webinar and of course use some social media to search up YouTube videos as well. There are plenty of different options in keeping up with the technology to avoid these obstacles. Now, you've got other points as well, like tech community forms. So Stack Overflow, you've got GitHub, you've even got W3Schools. So these platforms can help developers ask questions, share knowledge, and even collaborate on open source projects. So say you had an issue with a particular bit of code or a section of a page that you're building on a website or a web application. Simply open up a Git re repository, go ahead and make your project an open source project so you could do some collaborative work. You can upload that then to GitHub, ask for some help. And there are plenty of people within the Stack Overflow or GitHub community that are willing to help. But overall, with keeping up with the technology, it's best to just do some continuous learning. So the importance of learning and professional development is required, of course, just to build up your general knowledge on web development, especially if you get stuck on an obstacle, just try to look through the positive side as it is a learning curve for you as well. And what's great is if you do get past the obstacle, you can share your experience through different platforms just to help others as well with the same situation. So what exactly is browser compatibility? Browser compatibility is the critical aspect of web development, purely for the fact that different web browsers such as Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Safari, and others may interpret a and render code differently. Now, this issue can lead to inconsistencies, issues throughout the site, layout issues, um, how the website generally looks, functions for users. So we'll go through an elaboration on dealing with the challenge of browser compatibility. So just for demonstration purposes, we're gonna be using a Wix website builder. Now, of course, it applies the same if you're going to use any other website builder or if you're going to hard code a website or web application. Anyway, we are using Wix on the Google Chrome search engine. Of course, the same will occur for Mozilla Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Safari, or any other platforms. For a website builder like Wix, the browser compatibility will more or less be the same. But anyway, moving on, to understand the challenge of browser compatibility, just begin by explaining the challenge itself. Make sure that you as a web developer ensures that the website appears and works consistently across multiple browsers. Now, if we take a look at our profile tree website in different areas, you can see that the site here works perfectly fine for Google Chrome. So this is on Google Chrome. 
Now for this one, the setting is slightly different, but this is Mozilla Firefox. You can see that it's a little bit wider. However, it still is the same layout as you can see. It's just a little bit wider on the screen. And this is on Microsoft Edge. So the compatibility for the entire website is working perfectly fine and we're happy with how it looks. So that's what you need to do. Just basically see if it's consistent through multiple browsers. Sometimes it could change. However, that's when you start looking at your code or your layout just to see if it works perfectly fine. Check your margins, check your padding. Now the importance of cross browser compatibility. So of course there is a diverse user base and multiple different users may have different browser preferences. So you have to ensure as a web developer that you provide consistent experience regardless of the browser chosen. And other factors that you need to consider as well is the browser testing tools. Now there's plenty of uh, browser testing tools to be used out there like browser stack, cross browser testing, and Lambda test. That's the sort of ones that you can use. And jumping back onto the Wix site itself. So the reason why I want to explain what browser compatibility looks like with Wix, uh, it's just easier to showcase it. So you can see here that we have a desktop version, a tablet version, and a mobile version. Now, if I shrink this down, you can see that majority of the actual elements shrink with the screen. So as soon as I uh, shrink it down, you can see that the images uh, move just to accommodate the actual changes. You can see how it's changing there. However, it's not changing the actual font size. So that is what makes a compatible or browser compatible type um, site and you also are checking the responsive design as well. So if I take a look at that on the tablet version and if I shrink that as well you can see that it's still perfectly fine within those uh, sizes. Mobile version of course there's multiple different sizing of uh, mobile you can see uh, the responsive design still works. So it's best to always test this. Uh, you can just double check the layout of course uh, if you are using a website builder. Also, what I would recommend is to really use the browser dev tools. Reason being is with these platforms like Google as well have Chrome extensions and you can use these Chrome extensions when you are coding. So here we have VS Code on uh, the browser and still works the same as using Visual Studio Code. Uh, you can inspect elements, you can view the console for error messages, you can still modify CSS or JavaScript in real time, of course. Uh, it's all here. And you can troubleshoot and debug issues specific to certain browsers. So this would be a good platform to use as well. So you can see that this is uh, still Wix. You can see the documentation there. Got a source code for the backend. So these are all um, backend stuff. Now, if you did have, uh, of course, extensions, you can use these extensions for it as well. Uh, so if, of course you have like a color wheel here, which helps you um, find out the hex code for things. So quite a few handy Chrome extensions to use while you are coding on the browser. So moving on, um, next up is the best practices for coding. So with the browser compatibility, you have to ensure that you do provide the best practices for coding. So you do have web standards like HTML5, CSS3, and you'd be best using the specific coding languages that are used for other websites or the most commonly used languages. You have the likes as well for CSS frameworks and libraries. CSS frameworks like Bootstrap and CSS libraries like normalize.css help standardize styles and improve compatibility across browsers. And these frameworks often come with built-in solutions for cross-browser issues anyway. So that's why it's 
great to have the best practices for coding. Now on top of this as well, it's great to learn about the vendor prefixes. So you have the likes of WebKit, Moz, MS, and O, and of course these are the sort of prefixes in CSS that you can use to ensure that there's compatibility for CSS3 properties in different browsers. And if you do as well struggle with older uh, browsers, then you can use polyfills or JavaScript libraries that provide functionality for HTML5 and CSS. And overall, once you have completed uh, the overall understanding for browser compatibility, the best thing to do is always to test. So you've got the testing strategy. So that's systematic testing that may include just checking different browsers to test, checking the performance of the responsive design as well, and documenting issues and solutions. Now, just to show as well on our profile tree website, if you just go to the inspect tool for each of the browser, just check how it's doing. Um, now we have Lighthouse for this version where we can check the performance and audit the actual site itself. So we'll have a look at what it comes up with in terms of the mobile version for profile tree. So let's have a look. Now with the audit, it doesn't take that long. It just takes uh, around a minute or two. So once this is fully filed a report, you can see that we have a 58 performance accessibility as well as 92, which is great. That's what we want to see, especially for browser compatibility. Uh, best practices, which is 95. So that's more or less to do with our code to see if we reduced our code, we're able to fix some of the issues that have been uh, told through Lighthouse. And of course, we've got SEO, which is 100, which isn't which isn't too uh, important with uh, browser compatibility, but we can also see how it looks within the mobile version and everything looks great on that end. But of course, once you have created the website and you've tested to see that it's browser compatible, it's best as well to also do continuous testing. So just be sure that you do ongoing testing, monitor it as well, Especially if there are new browser versions that are released, it's best to just double check whether the site hasn't got any layout issues. It's best to overall just keep up with the browser updates anyway and address issues promptly. Of course, the users are, are going to be using the latest and you don't want to fall behind with keeping up with the technology as well. So overall, you can see that browser compatibility is an ongoing process in web development. As a web developer, it should encourage you to prioritize it from early stages, just so you don't have to fall through the obstacles. So the earlier that you detect issues, the best it will be for the stages throughout the project. And that's just to minimize compatibility related challenges down the road. So just for demonstration purposes, we're going to be using a Wix website builder. Now, of course, it applies the same if you're going to use any other website builder or if you're going to hard code a website or web application. Anyway, we are using Wix on the Google Chrome search engine. So what exactly is security concerns? In web development, it's critical to address this particular issue due to the increasing number of cyber threats and data breaches to e-commerce sites and non-e-commerce sites. Now, of course, you can face the obstacles of security. This is why there are plenty of different tools and different software that you can use in order to back up your website. So we'll be using WordPress as an example just to showcase some of the security. But firstly, let's gain an understanding of what exactly is web security. So web security involves protecting websites and web applications from various threats. This could be like hacking or hacking attempts. You could even have data breaches as well, malware injections and plenty more. Now, the significance of security is, of course, having 
an understanding or just being aware that there are potential consequences of security breaches. And this would be compromised user data, um, a reputable damage, even legal consequences. So that's why it's always best to have top quality security for any website. It should be the top priority to have on a website. Of course, you have your design and you have your content and so much more, but your main concern and priority should always be security. Now, as I said, this would be towards non-e-commerce sites and e-commerce sites. An example being if you have an e-commerce website and it's not protected, you don't have that SSL certificate as well. That means that it, it shows that it's a non-trusted website. And if a user does buy anything from that site, since it's unprotected, that means that it's vulnerable to hacking and any payments that go through the payment gateways, hackers can manage to take that particular payment away from your site. So it's always best to have security for a website. Now, of course, if you do face obstacles with security and you're, you don't have much of an understanding, that's when continuous learning kicks in place. So just stress the need for continuous learning and skill development in web security. Always think about the different situations that can happen with security risks. Of course, that being said, security concerns is a priority to have for a site. Now, the reason why I say you should have continuous learning through web security is that you can implement secure coding practices. So of course, hackers will find different ways in order to gain access to a site and that's, that can be through coding as well. So just ensure that you have the best database to prevent SQL injection, as well as cross-site scripting, which is XSS. So those are the two common uh, practices that hackers do in order to gain access to your website. Now, the reason why we have WordPress up is to show you the security tools and these tools on this particular site is known as plugins. So if we have a look at the plugins that are available for this site, you can see that they also provide security plugins. So here we currently have an iTheme security plugin and that's the, you can see that it offers uh, 30 ways to lock down a WordPress site and easy to use WordPress security plugin. Now that's not just the plugin that you can use. Of course, there are several ones that have been created for WordPress. Now, WordPress is a great community um, if you need help and understanding on, on some plugins. So if we take a look at the security and we'll go ahead and search for security. There's a list. So you've even got WordPress security, Jetpack, solid security, all-in-one security. So the list goes on. You've got a list of different ones that you can use. You can pay for a premium version as well. And you can see that um, some of these prevent brute force attacks. Well, majority of these um, security plugins will have a prevention for brute force attacks anyway. Another thing to keep practice of as well is if you do have a site, so it doesn't have to be WordPress, of course, it could be uh, another word, WordPress or a, another website builder or another actual um, hard coded site. Just be sure that you always constantly do software updates. So software updates are great for keeping all the plugins up to date. And the reason why you want to uh, update your plugins is outdated software can contain known vulnerabilities that attackers can exploit and in order to do this so if you were to go in the plugins again so we'll just demonstrate here you'll always see an update now you can also enable auto updates but i would not recommend to do auto updates in case it breaks the site so the best thing to do is so just to prevent that obstacle um just disable auto updates and just make sure that you have the uh, just an update now once you've clicked update now anyway, it'll just, uh, it'll show you that uh, there's like a little wheel, wheel there. Now it's not the same for any other website builders if you are gonna be using one. So this one's for Elementor, as you can see uh, on WordPress. Um, it all 
is different, especially for like Wix or Shopify or whatever website builder you're using, or if you're hard coding it yourself and you're getting all the different plugins, then uh, this would be the way to go. Um, but yes, it's always best to just keep the software updated and just to prevent the vulnerabilities that I ex uh, the, the attackers can exploit. Now, another thing that we have also mentioned is the actual audit. So like we've stated previously on a site, so we'll actually just uh, open up a site here. Simply just open up your website, select the inspect tool, do a regular security audit. So we can even check the security here. You can see that an overview of this shows that we've got HTTPS implementation. So like I was talking about, which is SSL, which is also known, known as TLS now. So that's uh, an encryption and that's uh, good for, as well as non-e-commerce sites, e-commerce sites, especially since you want to make sure that the data transmission between the user's browser and web browser is encrypted. There are several ways to obtain SSL certificates anyway. You can do it through Cloudflare or Flywheel or any other um, security websites that offer it. So you can see for this one, we do have a valid HTTPS. But anyway, with the regular security audit, go ahead and select on Lighthouse and just see how the actual site is performing as well as checking the security. There are websites as well to double check whether the site is performing well and the security up is up to date. There are also uh, plugins like Wapalizer that you can check for just to see what technologies are being used on a particular site. So I'll actually go ahead and show you guys the uh, Wapalizer. So here I have a downloaded Excel sheet and it just shows us what sort of uh, widgets, analytics, security that it's using. So we can see that the Connolly Cove website is using a reCAPTCHA. And on top of that, of course, there are plugins to support the site itself, but that is one of the uh, security that's on there as well. You can see uh, what it's using, which is a uh, Cloudflare. And then we've got MailChimp as well for marketing. So that's just all the other plugins that are readily available or the technology, sorry, that are on the actual site itself. So in conclusion to the security concerns, you can see that as a web developer, you should always adopt security first. That should be your main priority. That should be your first mindset. And as well as that, make sure you feel free to collaborate with security experts when needed, especially if you're within those obstacles. So what exactly is security concerns? In web development, it's critical to address this particular issue due to the increasing number of cyber threats and data breaches to e-commerce sites and non-e-commerce sites. Now, of course, you can face the obstacles of security. This is why there are plenty of different tools and different software that you can use in order to back up your website. So we'll be using WordPress as an example, just to showcase some of the security. But firstly, let's gain an understanding of what exactly is web security. So web security involves protecting websites and web applications from various threats. This could be like hacking or hacking attempts. You could even have data breaches as well, malware injection. So is there any other key points in terms of the web development obstacles. Yes, so a couple of them would be to do with performance optimization, some content management and learning curve. So performance optimization basically just goes through what we've went through in terms of the browser compatibility and responsive design. It's just more to do with just making sure that the site is, isn't slow loading and that it's fast performing. So again, just do an audit check for as well as the performance, check its security, check the responsive design, uh, check its uh, browser compatibility, see how it works on the mobile, see how it works on desktop. Again, if you are optimizing a website, it's best to check its performance and that'll just overall reduce load times and improve page speed on, on 
on an ongoing challenge. So if you face that obstacle where it is slow loading, then I would check your code as well. So check the code weather to see if it's over cramming the actual site itself. See if you could reduce that code, whether it's HTML or CSS or even JavaScript. So depending on what platform you've uh, coded your website on. And on top of that as well, just see whether you need those images optimized. Double check your images as well. Add alt text as well onto them. Compress the files if you need to. Compress the video as well if it's too high quality uh, for the site and it's too overwhelming for the site. Um, just double check it. Also double check your pricing plan as well if you did build a website on a website builder. Uh, so that can't greatly affect it on why the performance is slow. And then of course you have content management. So that's just overall looking at the large volume content. And of course, if you do face this issue, this particular issue, uh, the best way to do it is just to configure everything, um, have things organized. That would be the best way to go about it. If you can change your code up as well, so it is a little bit neater, I would highly recommend to do so, especially if you're going through an obstacle for content management. Another alternative, of course, is if you do face issues with a current website, you may just want to rebuild something, then I would highly recommend to use a con content management system. So just like um, WordPress, it just helps developers configure and customize a template within the specific requirements without having the extra issues that you may occur or you may face. But overall, you can see that web development itself is just a learning curve. So the web development aspect of it is completely evolving each day. So you've got new languages coming each day. You've got frameworks. Tools are emerging regularly as well, since we have AI here to help us. So of course, if you, you get stuck with an, an obstacle, then it's best to maybe try to use one of these tools um, that are within the emerging technology, uh, like AI. So best thing to do is just to invest some of your own time in learning and just staying up to date, like we've discussed earlier on with the industry trends. And lastly, what I want to talk about is client expectations. So if you do run through obstacles as well with a client and say that they're expecting a little bit too much, just make sure that you clearly communicate the project scope. Talk to them about timelines as well. Discuss the hours that are required to accomplish the site that they are wanting. And then also discuss some of the potential issues from the start. Use project management tools just to make sure everybody's on the same page, especially if you're working with a bigger team, then it's best to stick with a management tool, keeps everything organized, keeps everything flowing right. And again, as I said, if the client's expecting too much, just lower their expectations. It's best to lower their expectations within a web development, and then you can build on that. And what they'll see is that you actually gave more effort. So you're not, promising too much to the client. Again, that goes on to deadlines and stress. Of course, you can have tight deadlines and high pressure situations. You want to make sure that you minimize that. So just prioritize your tasks for a spe specific web development so you don't have to run through that obstacle. Just do it bit by bit as well, just to see if you can achieve a particular area or if you can't pile up the ones that you can do, pile up the ones that you can't do, then again, talk about it to the client and then that's where you, you proceed from there. At the start of every client session anyway, you just want to make sure that you talk through the scalability of the actual site. So whether you're building a small site, medium sized site or a big site, you just want to ensure that that particular website is achievable as well as when it's finished in development, that that particular website doesn't need further development with SEO. So that's like increased traffic, data. Those could be very challenging, especially if you're creating a big e-commerce site within a given time. So of course, as a web developer, you'll end up facing challenges from the very beginning. But there you have it, guys. That is a few ways in overcoming these obstacles. If you enjoyed the video or if you found it helpful, let us know in the comment section below. We'd like to know what you think. 
But other than that, I'll see you guys for the next video. Thank you very much for watching.